another week, another cannon fodder. This should hopefully be the last cannon fodder in a row though. By the time this is out, I'll be returning to work on Last Light, and it'll be out this upcoming week, if not this week end. Afterwards, I'll be shifting over to the Shadow of Intent review, then finally Halo 5's story and lore. But for now, cannon fodder. This week starts off with some info on a couple of the armor sets being included in the upcoming update for Halo 5. We start off with the classic Mark IV. As the basis for the Gen 1 Mjolnir standard, many components of the original Mark IV can be used with Gen 2 tech suits and visors after firmware upgrades. This hybrid Gen 2 Mark IV Gen 1 suit is still used by select Spartan 2s. A battered Mark IV helmet once worn by the Master Chief is the last thing that Spartan IV candidates see before beginning their grueling evaluation and preliminary augmentation cycle. So, some interesting tidbits there. First, this idea that an old Mark IV helmet of the Master Chiefs is used as a motivational icon for Spartan IVs in training. Just another way the UNSC builds up the legend. Second, the statement that this set is used by select Spartan IIs. Now, you'd be forgiven for thinking this is a reference to Red Team from Halo Wars, but alas, it is not. Look at the wording. Hybrid Gen 2 Mark IV Gen 1 suits. Unless Red Team were finally found after the events of Halo 5, they would still be wearing the original Gen 1 Mark IV suits. So then, who? Doubtful that it's Blue Team, since most likely 343 doesn't want to change their appearance, and I doubt it's Naomi 010, as I can't imagine her downgrading from Mark 7 unless ordered to do so. Technically speaking, though, there are a number of potentials. We have a number of unknown Spartan 2 washouts that could have been resuscitated and fielded, or perhaps ones that were once thought MIA. <coughs> Great team! <clears throat> it's fun to speculate about, if nothing else. Conversely, though, I do have to bitch about one thing. Why in the hell did 343 feel the need to stay true to the classic design here, but not in the goddamn Full of Reach animated series? Seriously, if it was going to be in the game, why not stick to the proper Mark IV design in the Full of Reach series? Why the unnecessary changes? God. Anyway, next up is the new Ryzen suit. The Ryzen Next Generation Powered Assault Armor leverages the latest exoskeleton advances and Mjolnir BIOS extensions for a new breed of super soldier serving corporate and government interests. The neural interface controller in the Ryzen helmet lacks the feedback filters and bandwidth caps required by UNSC military standard specifications in order to maximize short-term combat performance. So not much to talk about, it's all very generic for the most part. Although, the helmet's description is interesting, noting that it lacks the standard filters and limiters of other helmet designs. It'd be interesting to see exactly how that manifests in combat. Moving forward, we have descriptions for two maps included with the update, both set on a familiar planet, Andesia. With these two, we now have five maps set on this planet, and the new Warzone map would seem to finally reveal why. Starting us off is Overgrowth. Designed by Andesia-born Wargames designers and set on Promesa, the same location as Plaza, the map is meant to serve as a reminder of the fate of certain colonies that survived the Human Covenant War. While some recovered, others fell into disarray, often hit by civil conflicts, plagues, or rapid reversion of planetary ecologies. It would seem that terraforming in the Halo universe is not a once-and-done process, but an ongoing one, at least in some cases. On Overgrowth, Spartans are confronted by what could have been, and what they may encounter when conducting surveys on dead colonies, killed not by the Covenant, but by the complexities of interstellar support. Now, I mean, we've had hints of this stuff in past fiction, notably with what happened to Arcadia following the first invasion by the Covenant in 2531, but to see a colony die because it didn't have the logistical support it needed is pretty haunting. It makes me wonder, too, if those insurrectionist movements ever gave thought to stuff like this when making their vies for independence. Anyway, next up is the new Warzone simulation, the Battle for Noctis, Noctis being the capital of Andesia. Despite the grim picture painted by Overgrowth, as we've seen on other maps, Andesia survived the war intact, and is currently very self-sufficient, wealthy, and highly populated. As such, it's seen as vital to the UEG. Unfortunately, the planet has found itself host to insurrectionists. Spartan Fours are constantly training in simulations of the city's metroplex to take on threats with minimal collateral damage. Should the need arise, the Spartans will, as always, be the UNSC's best asset against insurrectionist forces. And now that I think about it, what hope is there for Unity in a post-Halo 5 galaxy? The UEG was no doubt hit hard given the number of Guardians we see on Genesis. Even though Infinity escaped, she's just one ship. Moving forward, we have some teasers for upcoming armor sets. Modeled by senior 3D artist Kyle Hefley, the armors featured are called Marauder and Atlas. Atlas has a little Easter egg on its back, the tiny A089, a reference to the armor's concept number during development. After that, we have some more lore, of the humorous kind, featuring two legendary creatures. First up is Timmy the Whale. There is perhaps no greater pillar of biological beauty and grace than Timmy the Whale. 
Revered by the forerunners and ancient humanity alike, Timmy's gentle silhouette and soul-searching hue has provided a muse for many for eons. So important was Timmy's impact on galactic society that the life workers themselves made sure to archive the enigmatic life force of the gentle giant within the ancient forges, so that his mighty but silent song might once again be felt through a cartographer's craftsmanship far into the future. And next up is Olive the Pig. Like Timmy, Olive has a history steeped in myth amongst a multitude of star fairy creatures. Legend has it that by looking into the eyes of the sympathetic swine long enough, one might live a life free of guilt and shame. Stories were passed down by soldiers who told of times when they hesitated to make a killing blow, saw a vision of Olive appear to finish the job herself, absolving the attacker of regret. The cry of the humble hog, yoink, yoink, became a simple term of accepting the death dealer's row. <laughs> God. The issue then comes to a close with a notice for today's livestream which will have long since ended by the time I get this up, and news that the Hunt the Truth Season 2 Supercut has been released. And with that we come to the new universe entries. This week we have War Games Combat Orbital Munera Platform, Human Colony Alluvian, and an update to the SMG article with info on Halo 5's M20 Personal Defense Weapon. Starting off with Munera Platform, this is basically a standalone war game simulator in space. Interestingly, such platforms actually have corporate sponsorships. Armor and weapons corporations, of course. Along with keeping Spartans on their toes, the simulators also allow corporations to test designs and analyze the raw data to enhance their products. Munera platforms are found throughout UNSC space, most prominently over Earth and Mars, and have found popularity throughout the UNSC military, fostering cross-branch competitions like the one that got Vale into the Spartan program. Next up is Alluvion, a planet featured a couple times in prior fiction. The third rock from Bakto, Alluvion was founded in 2412 as a border world, a way station between the inner and outer colonies. Though little terraforming was required, the tidal activity caused by its moon, Follow, forced populations towards continental interiors. The planet was discovered by the Covenant in 2541, but only attacked a year later by a fleet led by Thel Vadami. The invasion force was held at bay for weeks, but when a support fleet eventually showed up, the colony was all but finished. It was sometime during these battles that Gabriel Thorne's parents were killed. When the UNSC returned in 2554, they were surprised to find an opening in the sea created by Forerunner Shield pylons, as we see in the Warzone map, Escape from Ark. After years of surveying, the UNSC discovered a repository containing an exotic fuel source that potentially could have replaced deuterium and contracted laying Dortmund to test the new energy source. Establishing the Alluvian Research Center in 2556, the corporation tested numerous prototypes. However, mining efforts accidentally triggered the retreat of the shield pylons, burying the Ark between Alluvian seas. Finally, we have the SMG, the new M20 specifically. Utilizing a high-velocity armor-piercing round, the M20 is designed for combat against rebel forces and shielded alien foes. Featuring a top-mounted magazine, retractable stock, folding foregrip, and smart link technology, this new SMG is well-balanced, deadly, and can be fired one-handed if necessary. And that does it for this week. Quite the info dump, I must say, and the arrival of the Mark IV has me excited as hell. I know what I'll be using in war games. You know, once I unlock it. Anyway, thanks for watching, and until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.